Hello everyone, today I'll be testing CPU that was praised for delivering a balance between performance and cost, making it a popular choice for mid-range gaming PCs, and especially popular in office setups. This CPU's peak usage was till 2016, but extended usage between gamers and techies was even till 2020, and of course I'm talking about CPU that was scavenged from old optiplexes and Lenovo Think Centers. And this mysterious CPU is none other than Intel Core i5-2400. But the real question is, how good this processor is now? And like in every video I make, before tests, let me tell you a thing or two about this i5. i5-2400 was released back in 2011 with Sandy Bridge architecture, which was marked a shift for Intel, with its integrated memory controllers and graphics being on the same die, which of course nowadays is the standard, but back then it was a big uplift for Intel. And of course, this CPU is based on LJ1155 socket, which was full of features back then, because of support for PCI Express 2.0 and SATA 3.0. And as every Sandy Bridge CPU, this i5 featured 32 nanometer process node. And with 4 cores and 4 threads, this processor's base clock speed was 3.1 GHz and turbo was 3.4 GHz. But most of the time in games, you would see 3. 2 GHz, because 3.4 is only for single core performance, and because of processor's old age, it needs juice to run, whopping 95 watts. As for test, I put 32 GB of DDR3 RAM, what is maximum what this old i5 supports, and for the old time's sake, I paired the CPU with RX 580, 4 GB version. And yeah. There is one more thing. I needed to modify Lenovo motherboard's BIOS, because back then Lenovo blacklisted AMD GPUs. Who knows why? Maybe you know why, write in the comments. But with all that, let's see how the CPU performs in nowadays. First up, Iron Game that was very popular back when the CPU was at its peak. And this game is Rainbow Six Siege in 1080p with high preset and anti-aliasing set to FXAA. I5-2400 managed to maintain an average of 109.4 FPS, where minimum was 64.8 and maximum was 137.6 frames per second. Gameplay was really smooth, and even in intense fights there wasn't any major FPS drops. And if you dial settings a bit, then you can play Rainbow Six Siege competitively, even in nowadays. And how could I skip GTA 5, which I played in 1080p at high settings, in DirectX 11 mode. The i5 hit an average of 53.9 FPS, minimum just 44.4 and maximum of 69.7 FPS. I will say that even game's average FPS wasn't in 60s, GTA runs stable without any frame drops. That's why I leave settings at high, because between normal and high settings is a huge graphical gap. Moving to a bit more CPU intensive game, Rocket League, at an ATP with high quality preset, an anti-aliasing set to FXAA high. CPU averaged 149 frames per second, with minimum of 105.7 FPS and maximum of 241.5 frames per second. And here, same as Rainbow Six Siege, FPS was stable enough to enjoy Rocket League and forget about computer's performance. But can this old i5 run Overwatch 2 just as well as Rocket League? Well, Overwatch 2 I needed to run in 1080p low to medium settings, but mostly medium, and with FSR turned off. Average frame rate was 119.6, minimum was 10.9, and maximum was 185.4 FPS. Well here everything runs smoothly, until you get closer to enemies, and closer you get into fights, more unstable frame rate became. Of course, when I turned on FSR, FPS became more stable, but overall, game quality decreased drastically. Maybe first release of Overwatch, this CPU could run better, but not the Overwatch 2. But next, I wanted to try one of the recent released game called The Finals, at 1080p in low preset. And here I already turned on FSR2 to balance, to make sure it's playable. And with that, average FPS was 47.3, where minimum was 32.7 and maximum was 64.4 FPS. And here, with fast paced gunplay, FPS dropped fast when I was in action. But strangely, when frame rate dropped, 
there wasn't any stutters or glitches. Because of that, I didn't even notice the frame drops and thought that I play most of the time with 60 FPS. And for the last game, I wanted to play something car related. I knew that this processor wouldn't run Forza, so I launched the Crew 2 in 1080p with medium preset and motion blur turned off. i5 averaged 54.4 fps, minimum just 43.6, but maximum was 60.1 frames per second. And yes, this game is locked to 60 fps, but still, with all that, this old i5 stood strong, and only when I was driving fast through the city there were small stutters, but nothing that impacts game experience. But now, it's time for 3 Mark CPU profile, so you can see and compare this processor score to other CPUs. And 3 Mark CPU profile I set to run for max threads, and i5-2400 scored 1271 points. And for the last test, I run Cinebench R23. For multicore test, 2400 scored 2231 points. But for single core test, CPU score was 640 points. I will say that in single core test, i5 performed two times better when I disabled integrated graphics, which led the CPU to fully boost to 3.4 GHz, otherwise it was just boosted to 3.2 GHz. And with all this information, in the end I will say that even this second gen i5 ran every game in 100% load, the RX 580 wasn't that much of CPU bottlenecked as I imagined. Because I saw not only once, but even really frequently, RX 580 hitting 100% usage. But the problem was that it didn't stay at 100%, because i5 couldn't keep up. But what do you think of this combination? And maybe some of you guys used this combo back in the day, write in the comments. But now, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.